Hi guys. My name is Harry. In this video, I will teach you how to learn HTML from scratch, and definitely, for a beginner. You know, to become a web developer, HTML is always the first thing you need to know, so this video is what you need. You will learn everything step by step, then finally, by the end of this video, you will become a master at HTML. Let's get started now. Before we jump into coding, we need to prepare a text editor to learn HTML. I recommend you guys using Visual Studio Code, a powerful editor for a web developer. It is open source software, and free to use. With no license required. To start, first, we create a new folder, for example, an HTML folder. Then open the text editor, Visual Studio Code. To open a folder created before, we choose File, then choose Open Folder. In this step, we will choose the HTML directory. To be able to start writing code, we will create an HTML file, named index with an extension of HTML. For quick creation one HTML file, you type the word doc, then press the key tab on the keyboard. Visual Studio Code will automatically generate for us a standard HTML file structure, very fast and convenient. So, what is HTML? HTML is the standard markup language for web pages. With HTML, you can create your own website. This tutorial follows the latest HTML5 standard. HTML is easy to learn, you will enjoy it. Example explained. The HTML element is the root element of an HTML page. The head element contains meta information about the HTML page. The title element specifies a title for the HTML page, which is shown in the browser's title bar or in the pages tab. The body element defines the document's body, and is a container for all the visible contents, such as headings, paragraphs, images, hyperlinks, tables, lists, etc. The H1 element defines a large heading. The P element defines a paragraph. To see what we done so far, select the index.html file, right click, choose copy path. Then open a browser, paste the link we copied before, and press enter. Now, as you can see, we have a simple HTML page, display the content in the body tag. Since the early days of the World Wide Web, there have been many versions of HTML. The purpose of a web browser, Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Safari, is to read HTML documents and display them correctly. A browser does not display the HTML tags, but uses them to determine how to display the document. HTML documents consists of a tree of these elements, and they specify how HTML documents should be built, and what kind of content should be placed in what part of an HTML document. An HTML element is defined by a start tag, some content, and an end tag. For example, tag name. Content goes here, slash tag name. The HTML element is everything from the start tag to the end tag. Let's display a heading tag. HTML headings are titles or subtitles that you want to display on a web page. Defined with the H1 to H6 tags. H1 defines the most important heading. H6 defines the least important heading. Headings are important, because search engines use the headings to index the structure, and content of your web pages. H1 headings should be used for main headings, followed by H2 headings, then the less important H3, and so on. Use HTML headings for headings only. Don't use headings to make text big or bold. Next, I want to make a text link, so use the anchor tag. HTML links are hyperlinks. You can click on a link and jump to another document. The most important attribute of the A element, is the ref attribute, which indicates the link's destination. The link text, is the part that will be visible to the reader. Clicking on the link text, 
will send the reader to the specified URL address. When you move the mouse over a link, the mouse arrow will turn into a little hand. After we create a link text, if I click on the text, open Google, we will be redirected to Google page. The HTMLP element defines a paragraph. A paragraph always starts on a new line, and browsers automatically add some white space, a margin, before and after a paragraph. The HTML BR element defines a line break. Use BR if you want a line break, a new line, without starting a new paragraph. The BR tag is an empty tag, which means that it has no end tag. HTML tags are not case sensitive, P uppercase means the same as P lowercase. The HTML standard does not require lowercase tags, but W3C recommends lowercase in HTML. Next, I want to display an image on the web page, so I will copy an image into the HTML code section. Right away. The Visual Studio code will update the photo we just copied. This is the photo I will show on our website. A very beautiful picture of terraced fields. Since our code is a bit long, I will comment on the parts above again. If the code is commented, the compiler will not use it anymore, so to comment, let's first highlight the area you want to comment on, then press Ctrl plus slash on the computer keyboard. Immediately, the commented areas will turn green. We save the changes, then reload the web page. Commented areas will no longer show up, even though we still have their code. To display an image, we use the image tag. Abbreviated as IMG. Similar to the break line tag, image is a tag with no end tag, we use it without the end tag. The SRC attribute is where we store the image, so this is the path to the image we want to show on the web page. Save your changes and reload the web page. This is my photo, it has been shown on the website, but its size is quite large. To adjust the size of an image, we will use the height and width properties. The width and height attributes always define the width and height of the image in pixels. Here I want a rectangular image with a width of 400 pixel and a height of 300 pixel. As you can see, the image is now smaller and the size we want it to be. To see the size of an image on the website, we will right click, select inspect, then select this arrow, and hover over the image. Immediately, a square appeared and indicated the information of the photo. Here the photo size is 400 by 300, respectively 400 pixel width, 300 pixel height. The image tag also helps us to display images online. I will choose a picture on the internet, for example a picture of winter. Right click, then choose to copy the link of the image. I will create a new image tag. In this tag, with the SRC attribute, I will update the image link I copied earlier. We save the changes and reload the page. Immediately, the new photo was updated. Similar to before, I will add width and height attributes to resize this image. I want to hide the winter photo, the other way to comment the code is that, we add characters before and after the element we want to comment on. If we comment successfully, immediately, the whole line of code will turn green. After commenting on the image tag, if I reload the page, the winter photo will disappear. If our image fails to load, the image tag supports an alt attribute, specifies an alternate text for the image. Here, if our image does not load, has been deleted or the link to the image is incorrect. We will display the text that this image cannot be found. I will change the link to the photo, so that we cannot use this link to find the image. We reload the web page. Immediately, the picture will disappear, because the link is wrong, and we will receive a message, 
Image not found. To make the website more beautiful, we will use the HTML style attribute. For example, here I will change the text color of this text to red, then I will use the color and color properties to red. Save the change, and immediately, our text has turned red. Similarly, we can add additional CSS to this HTML tag, using semicolons between CSS properties. Here, I have made our text red, and there is a green border around it. The HTML style attribute is used to add styles to an element, such as color, font, size, and more. With the title attribute, we can name the tag HTML, and when we hover over that tag, the title name will be displayed. I will remove the comment of these heading tags. We will get rid of the comments, by deleting these characters, at the beginning, and the end of the commented code. When we reload the website, these heading lines will appear, and we will comment on this photo to have more space. With the style attribute, we can not only change the font color, but also change the size of the text, with the font size property. Currently, the H6 tag is the smallest size, but I will change the size of this tag, immediately, our H6 tag has a much larger size. If transferred to a smaller size, the H6 tag will shrink immediately. Next, we will use the HR tag. The HR tag defines a thematic break in an HTML page, and is most often displayed as a horizontal rule. The HR element is used to separate content, or define a change, in an HTML page. Similar to the break line tag, we do not need the end tag for the HR tag. There is a problem that, we cannot be sure how HTML will be displayed. Large or small screens, and resized windows will create different results. With HTML, you cannot change the display, by adding extra spaces, or extra lines in your HTML code. The browser will automatically remove any extra spaces, and lines when the page is displayed. This poem will display on a single line. The solution, using the HTML pre-element. The HTML pre-element defines preformatted text. The text inside a pre-element, is displayed in a fixed width font, usually courier, and it preserves both spaces and line breaks. If I use only the P tag here, all our text will be on the same line. One alternative way to have text on multiple lines, is to use the break line tag. When we want a new line, then we add a break line tag. Here we add three break tags, reload the page, now we have a complete poem. The HTML style attribute has the following syntax, tag name style equals property value. The property is a CSS property. The value is a CSS value. You will learn more about CSS later in this tutorial. This is the syntax for using the HTML style attribute. To better understand the style attribute, I will illustrate with the heading tags below. The first is the H1 tag. I will change the text size, with the font size property. Here, I will set the size of the text to 15 pixels. Followed by the change for the H2 tag. With the H2 tag, I will add color to this tag. With the H3 tag, I will add a yellow border with 1 pixel thickness. We define the border thickness, border type, and finally the color of this border. With the H4 tag, I will create a distance between H4 tag compared to the H5 and H3 tags, is 10 pixel with margin attribute. With the H5 tag, I will convert the text in this tag, to all uppercase with the text transform uppercase property. Save your changes, and reload the page. We have seen that, the style properties are shown, with the H1 tag being smaller. H2 tag has added colors. But H3 tag doesn't have a yellow border. I have typo error on this tag. Save changes. 
This time, we have seen all the colors of the tags. I will comment these heading tags again, with the shortcut, Ctrl plus slash on the keyboard. In case you want to use italic, or bold text, HTML also helps us to do that. The I tag, stands for italic, which will produce italics. The B tag, which stands for bold, will produce bold text. By default, for other tags, HTML will be normal vertical text. Save changes and reload the web page. You can see that our text has changed, with italic, bold and normal text. I will add a break line tag here, to make it easier to see. An attribute of HTML, that we often use, is the style tag, with color options. To define the color of the tag, you can declare the color name directly for that tag. For example, what I do here, is declare the green color, or can also use other variations. For example, I used a mixed declaration system of three colors, red, green, and blue. I will randomly get three coefficients for our color. Let's uncomment this P tag, and style it. In addition, we can also define colors, using a 6 character hexa, beginning with the hashtag sign. When we reload the web page, we have the colors defined. One cool feature of Visual Studio, is that when you hover your mouse over the color, a color selection pop-up will appear. You can click on this pop-up, to select the color you want, quite convenient, right? We already know the basic attributes of HTML. In the following videos, we will learn about CSS. In the next section, we will learn more about the combination of CSS and HTML. CSS will make our HTML page more beautiful and animated. So, what is CSS? CSS stands for, Cascading Style Sheets. CSS saves a lot of work. It can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once. With CSS, you can control the color, font, the size of text, the spacing between elements, how elements are positioned, and laid out, what background images, or background colors to be used, and much more. CSS can be added to HTML documents in three ways. Firstly, inline, by using the style attribute inside HTML elements. Secondly, internal, by using a style element in the head section. Finally, external, by using a link element to link to an external CSS file. An inline CSS, is used to apply a unique style to a single HTML element. The following example sets the text color of the H1 element to tomato, and add a red border. To use CSS inline, we will start with the HTML style property, then define the CSS properties. Separated by semicolon. An internal CSS, is used to define a style for a single HTML page and often defined in the head section of an HTML page, within a style element. We will delete this inline property. Save changes, and reload the web page. Immediately, all of the H1 heading changed to green, here and here. Next, I will create a few new heading tags. If I reload the website, this heading tag will also turn green. So, how can we add different CSS to these two heading tags? We will use the HTML ID attribute. The ID attribute, is used to point to a specific style declaration in a style sheet.
Similarly, I will also add an ID for this heading tag. The syntax for ID is, write a hash character, followed by an ID name. Then, define the CSS properties within curly braces. Here. I'm going to make this H1 tag turn green. If I reload the web page, only this tag would turn green. The other tag won't get discolored, because we just CSS for the heading tag with a specific ID. Similarly, for the remaining heading tag, I will turn red. Another way to add CSS to elements, is to use the class attribute of the HTML. The HTML class attribute, is used to specify a class for an HTML element. Multiple HTML elements can share the same class. To create a class, write a period, dot, character, followed by a class name. Then, Define the CSS properties within curly braces. Here, I will convert the text of the two heading tags to uppercase. Both these H1 tags will be affected, because we use the same class for them. HTML elements can belong to more than one class. To define multiple classes, separate the class names with a space. The element will be styled according to all the classes specified. In the following example, the heading element belongs to both the my class, and also to your class. And we'll get the CSS styles from both of the classes. One thing to note, is that there is a difference between the class attribute, and the ID attribute. A class name, can be used by multiple HTML elements, while an ID name, must only be used by one HTML element within the page. If I reload the web page, our H1 tags still capitalize, and also have a purple border. We have been familiar with embedding CSS inline with style tags, and embedding CSS at the beginning of HTML files. However, both of these methods are not recommended. Since it is difficult to maintain projects, when we have a large amount of HTML and CSS. The most common way to add CSS, is to keep the styles in external CSS files. In the coding directory, we will create a file to write CSS, called style.css. In order to be able to embed this particular file, in the HTML, we will use a link element, to link to an external CSS file. rel, stands for relationship, specifies the relationship between the current document, and the linked document. Here will be the style sheet. Ref, specifies the location of the linked document. I will move all the CSS, to the file we just created. If I reload the web page, nothing changes. All of our CSS is working. In this tag, I will assign it a new class. Instead of writing CSS inline, or writing in HTML file. This time, I will write in a separate CSS file. With ID, we will start with a hashtag character, followed by the name of the ID. Here, I will make the text larger, with the font size property, bold text, with the font way, and finally turn the text color to yellow. Save changes. Pay attention to this tag. If I reload the web page, this tag will be changed. With the separation of the CSS from the HTML, it makes it easier to manage the CSS, and maintain the code. Here, I will follow the example with creating a button. To CSS this button, I will add a class called btn. After that, reload the website. This is our button. Looks pretty simple. In the style file, we will CSS for this button. Since we define the class, it will start with a dot, followed by the class name. Here, I will make the button, a bit higher than before, with the height property. The border radius, 
to define the radius of the element's corners. Use cursor pointer, so when we hover the mouse to the button, a hand click will appear, instead of the default arrow pointer. I want to create one more effect, when hovering the button, the button will change color. To do this, we will use the hover property of CSS. I want the button to turn green when we hover the mouse over this button. Here our button is inactive. I need to remove the white space here. Immediately, our button changed color when we hover the mouse. Similarly, we can also define more CSS properties. Here, the button will turn red, and the text will also be capitalized. We have learned through the basic HTML tags. Another tag we also use very often is the table. To define a table, we will use table tag. Inside is the content of this table. We'll start with the tr tag. tr, means table row, is the content element of the table. We will create a header for the table, with th tag, which means table head. I want to create a table consisting of the first three columns, with number order, name, and phone number. I will create the next row for the table. This time we use tag td, which means table data, we will create three tag table data, corresponding to three columns of table head. Copy this tag to create more table rows. After that, we will alter the data, to make these rows look different. If I reload the website, this is our table. The table header consists of three columns, bolded, below is the content of the table, represented by the table row. Next, we will add CSS to this table to make it nicer. First, we'll make this table full width with the width property, set to maximum, 100%. I will add comments here. tr is table row, th is table head, td is table data. Next, I will add a border to this table. I will add a border for each of our data cells. Here is the table, then the data table. Similarly, we will add a border to the table header. As you can see, our border is composed of two layers, because the intersecting borders are being added together. We will use the border collapse property. Finally, use text align to adjust the text center.
and other HTML property, which we also use very often is lists. HTML lists, allow web developers to group a set of related items in lists. An on-order list, starts with the UL tag. Each list item starts with the Li tag. The list items will be marked with bullets, small black circles, by default. An ordered list starts with the OL tag. Each list item starts with the Li tag. The list items will be marked with numbers by default. We can also add CSS to these Li tags. I will change the color of this tag to pink. We can also add hyperlinks within li tags. Here, if we click on the li tag text, we will redirect to google.com. Target, specifies where to open the linked document. We use blank so the destination link will be opened in a new tab. With HTML, we can also insert emoji. Here we need to know the emoji's Unicode code. In this tutorial, we have become familiar with the basic attributes of HTML and CSS. Thank you for watching the video, and see you in the next videos.